Hello everyone, this is William, and I will be showing you through the Code Academy tutorial that we're going to do for the Hour of Code on Monday. Now, to get to this tutorial, you're going to want to go to the blog, and under Extras, Hour of Code, and then click on the Code Academy tutorial. Now, first, this is the website, Code Academy, as previously mentioned, and this area right here is going to be telling you a little bit about what you're going to be doing, and if you're learning any new syntax, and then this is what you're going to want to do to be able to go into the next section. So move your mouse over Code Academy in the preview window. Pretty cool. Yep. Colors. Scars around. Press save and submit code to get started. All right, let's go. Before we get started, let's see what the animation looks like with your name. In line one, replace Code Academy with your name. And then you're just going to follow these instructions, just like they said. Replace that with whatever your name is. For me, that will be William and that's what it looks like. Yay, first lesson. Alright, now it's gonna tell you this. If you want to sign up you can. I signed out of my account, but you can also just click continue to the next section if you don't want to do that. Now in order to, to write your name, that in order to write a program that animates your name, we need to learn the, progr the programming language JavaScript. Sorry for stuttering so much guys, Jeez. Let's get started by getting to know each other. What's your name? All right, so replace in here, replace your name, as it says down here, with whatever your name is. Again, for me, that'll be William. And then we can click Save and Submit to go on. Very good. You just wrote a string. A string can contain letters, numbers, spaces, and symbols. Strings are surrounded with quotes. These are all strings. So you see, this is the name, a number, and a question. Those are all strings. In our code, we're using document.write with parentheses simply to display the string of your name in the preview window. The important stuff is inside the parentheses, so let's just focus on that. So there's, what they're saying there is this is what is actually printing out the code here, but just focus on the stuff there. To discover the length of, the, of a string, write the string within quotes, then write a period, full stop, and the word length like this. All right, so let's do period length, and you can see that my name is seven characters long. Great job. Now let's do some math. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers in JavaScript like this. So see, pretty simple, just plus sign, minus sign. You're gonna wanna use an asterisk for a multiplication sign and then this slash for a divide sign. And that's standard in at least every programming language I know. Multiply two really big numbers. Write your, expre your expression between the parentheses like this. All right, so let's just write. And see, math, ta-da. If you want to divide them, there you go. But they want us to multiply, so. Nice job. Now let's take a look at booleans. A boolean is like a light switch. It can only have two values. Just like a light switch can only be on or off, a boolean can only be true or false. We can use booleans in your code by writing statements that evaluate to true or false like this. So you can see 10 is greater than 3 evaluates true, and 5 is less than 4 is false. Booleans are extremely useful because they let us run certain parts of our code only if certain conditions are true. We'll see how to do this in the next section. All right, so we want to write a statement that evaluates to true, and they want us to use I'm coding like a champ and see if it's greater than 10 characters. So what we're going to want to do, make sure you put the quotations, and then I'm coding like a champ. So if you want a statement to evaluate to false, you would say that the, that the length of I'm coding like a champ is less than 10. But we're going to want to put greater than 10 so the values to true. And then we can move on to the next section. Again, they're going to want us to sign up. But again, let's just click continue to the next section. In the previous section, we started learning the JavaScript programming language. So far, we've used strings, numbers, booleans. In this section, we'll write a program to animate your name. Move your mouse over Code Academy in the preview window. All right, so this is what we're going to be doing now. 
So far, we've been typing strings, numbers, and okay, they're saying this a lot of times. I think that you guys know what we're doing, so. All right, on line one, create a variable named my name and type in your name. So, there, that's what you're going to type. My name equals William. Should probably capitalize that. And don't forget the end quote. Ta da! And then this is the function that they already had. And that's what's making it appear in the window. Excellent. Your name is drawn as a collection of bubbles. How did this happen? In line one, you create a variable named my name, in which you stored a string of your name. On line five, the function named draw name took your name and drew it on the screen. Hang on, what's a function? A function takes in an input, does something with it, and then returns an output in our code. The input was your name, and the output was the picture of your name as a bunch of bubbles. Let's give the bubbles some color. I have prepared a variable named blue that stores the color blue. Add blue as another input to the draw name function like this. All right, so you're going to want to do comma and then blue. And then our name turned blue. Arrays. Looking good. Your name is now drawn as a collection of blue bubbles. But wouldn't it be cooler if we could use more than one color? Variables like my name can store numbers or strings. But so far, we've only been able to store one number or one string at a time. Good thing we have arrays. Arrays store lists of data. So here's some examples of arrays. We have some numbers here and some strings up here. Anytime you see data surrounded by square brackets, it is an array. In fact, computers can understand colors like blue as an array of numbers, as shown in the example above. So this actually makes the color blue. I've added a few variables that store colors in lines 1 through 5. They are simply arrays of three numbers. On line 7, set my name equal to your name again. Remember to use quotes, since your name should be a string. In line 8, create an array named letter colors that stores lists of colors. For example, letter colors equals red, orange, green. Remember to separate each variable with a comma. So we go to line 8 and then create a variable named letter colors. Now, also, I should have pointed this out earlier, but you could just copy and paste from down here and still get a good result. But I would strongly encourage you to type it out yourself so you get practice with typing the code and practice with knowing where all the symbols are on your keyboard. And there we go. So there's our name, and it goes red, orange, green, and then we'll repeat. If we wanted to add in more, we could also go blue and purple. But we need to put an actual name for that. And as you see, it'll just keep on repeating that. All right, we earned a badge. Change the bubble shape. Colorful, what did we just do? We gave the function draw name two inputs. One was your name, the other was an array of colors. The output was a multicolored picture of your name. Now let's change the, the shape of the bubbles from circles to squares. There's a variable called bubble shape that lets you control the shape of bubbles. When bubble shape equals square, the bubbles will be shaped as squares. When bubble shape equals circle, the bubbles are shaped as circles. Change the shape of the bubbles from circles to squares. In line nine, add bubble shape equals square, the bubbles will change to squares. All right, decisions, decisions. Great job. Now let's use Booleans to decide whether a block of code should run. Take a look at this code. All right. Now imagine we have a robot that starts on line one of this code and walks down line by line. If the condition, in this case 10 is less than three, and values to true, then the robot runs the code inside the pair of curly brackets, which will make the bubble circle shaped. Else, the condition is false, which it is in this case, so the robot skips the code in the first block of curly brackets entirely and runs the code in the second block. Therefore, the bubbles will be square shaped. Let's add an if else statement to our program. Delete bubble shape equals square on line nine of your code. Replace it with an if else statement that makes the bubble circle shaped. Use the if else statement in the example above to get started. 
Remember to imagine a robot walking down your if-else statement line by line. All right. So let's double check here. They want us to make them circle shaped. So we'll do if, and then use these brackets to make the condition. So we'll do if one is less than that, then we're going to run this code to make bubble shape equal to circle. And then make sure you add a ending curly bracket, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. And then else, you don't need to put a condition here because we're evaluating if this condition isn't true. And there we go. Whew, great work with that if else statements. You can wipe the sweat off your brow now. Let's make the bubbles in your name more interactive. It would be cool if you could move your mouse over your name and cause the, the and cause it to move in some way. We have a function called bounce name that shakes your name around when you when the mouse comes close to it. Note the bounce name does not take any inputs, unlike draw name, which, which which took two inputs. Add the function bounce bounce name as the last line of your program after the draw name function. Remember that bounce name is a function that does not take any inputs. All right, so we can go down here to line 18, and then type in bounce name. And even though it doesn't take inputs, make sure you add those brackets and then a semicolon. Bounce the bubbles. Sweet, your name rattles around when you move your mouse near it. Now as cool as it, as it is to see your name shake about, it would be even cooler to bounce the bubbles themselves. We have another function called bounce bubbles that does this similar to the bounce name. This function does not take any inputs. Replace bounce name with bounce bubbles. All right, so we'll just type bounce bubbles and then it bounces around. Congratulations! Awesome! The bubbles in your name scatter about and regroup when you move your mouse over them. You start this track learning JavaScript and some basic ingredients to make a program, such as strings, numbers, and booleans. Then you connected these concepts together with variables, arrays, and an if-else statement to wire a program that animates your name. Congratulations on all your hard work! Alright, so that's the end of this. Thanks to these people who uh, made this course. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope you guys learned something from this video. Have a great day.